looks ridiculous. Dig it. Um, so you're good if I swear. What's up, everybody? We are back for another episode of Real Advice, and I have the wonderful Melissa Menard with me. She's a, I almost said rabulous, fabulous. I am rabulous, <laughs> rabulous. and fabulous. We create our own words on this show. <laughs> <laughs> rabulous, fabulous, awesome agent uh, in Santa Monica, west side of LA, Sherman Oaks, anywhere that people are, she's willing to provide value and to help. Absolutely. You, you nailed it. Other than that, uh, can you give us a couple of more sentences, who Melissa is, what she likes, doesn't like, uh, just a little bit more about your background? Sure. Uh, I was born in Chicago, raised in Detroit. I'm a second generation uh, real estate professional and custom home builder in the state of Michigan. I've been licensed uh, this year, 2019, for 25 years. And I know. Uh, thank you. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, I moved to Los Angeles in 1999 um, and continued working in real estate and custom home building with the family business. So I commuted back to Detroit. And then when the crash happened in 08, um, I immediately recognized the need uh, to become licensed here in Los Angeles because um, what it boiled down to very quickly is that I'm a helper. I love helping people. I get great satisfaction in um, helping pe people either move on or move into um, whatever it is in their lives. And that gives me great satisfaction being able to help them and guide them through that process. I come, yeah, right? Awesome. And I think what a lot of people need to understand is no matter the industry, this is obviously a real estate podcast, but it doesn't really matter the industry. At the end of the day, you need to help people. You need to put people first and you need to do the right things no matter what. Um, we've talked about it on previous episodes with other people and we're not going to get too in depth, but unfortunately there's a, a lot of agents, not necessarily new agents, but there's a lot of agents that they're willing to do whatever it takes to get paid, whether that's good or bad. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't understand and they need to realize is the best agents in the world are not doing crazy things. They're not, you know, doing all these different, and they're not doing everything exactly. out there. Yep. They're doing a few things, but for sure they're doing the things that are right. Mm -hmm. They're putting people first. They're putting values over commissions. And in the long run, that's how they sustain this. Hey, only, you know, 87% of agents are out in five years. How are these people in 15, 20, 25 yep. years? It's like, hey, I'm just doing the right things. That's exactly And it. those people are bringing me people, mm -hmm. and those people will bring me people. And that kind of leads into our conversation, which is on agent-to-agent -agent referrals, mm -hmm. because I would presume that, hey, if an agent were to offer um, a referral to me, and I do what's right by that client, and they have a phenomenal experience, more than likely that agent is going to try and get me another referral. Because not only... Am I looking like a rock star saying, hey, I have Jane Doe and I'm sending her to Melissa. When she comes back, I'm like, Melissa was awesome. She yeah. did this, she did that, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, great, because I know, hey, I can trust Melissa. Let me just send her. I, I'm going to meet all these other agents, but who cares about all these other agents? Because I already know, like, and trust. And at the end of the day, if the clients do that as well, it's very easy to just continue that relationship. Give us one piece of advice that you would give to somebody or an agent um, that does not do any agent to agent referrals currently, what's something that they could do, plan, put into action right now to try and get into the agent to agent referral space? Does that it, make sense? Yep, okay. it does. And it's super easy. And uh, Tom and I had a conversation about this uh, when I spoke at Summit 2017. And I said, this is one of the most underrated and frankly, uh, most cost-effective lead generation sources that exist. If you're good with people, and like you said, if you're not about the money, I'm not about the money. I don't care. Well, okay, I'm a not. I'm not a nonprofit organization, <laughs> and I don't say ah, you can keep the money. But uh, it's at the at the end of the day, it's about helping people. I can wake up in the morning and say, "All right, who am I going to help today?" And at the end of the day, I can say, "Wow." 
look at who I helped today. And that, that fills me up. That excites me. That's, that's what keeps me going. I'm excited for the next morning. And if, if you're an agent that is interested in pursuing this line of lead generation, it's super simple. Because every time I go to any kind of an event, um, for agent to agent, for example, I am auditioning. Every time I meet you, you're going to get good eye contact. You're going to get a strong handshake. And I'm going to be um, kind, but efficient, because I want to be respectful of your time. And I'm going to make sure that we exchange information. And like Tom always says, it's about the follow-up. So every time we've had, uh, I've met a person, I now have a follow-up plan, a campaign, if you will, to follow up with those agents. And that's a key point, because if I can follow up with, with you as an agent, and I'm not getting any business um, right there, but then I follow up, that just is a testament to my character of how I will treat your clients when you refer me to them. And I think a lot of agents, they miss the ball on that and they miss the mark very huge because they'll call you, hey, I found you, you know, I'm living in Miami, you're living in Huntington Beach, I want to send you a client. They send the client and then they don't, you never hear from the person again. Yep. And um, actually, let me take a step back. It's not even, hey, I'm, I'm sending you a client. It's like, oh, you're in Huntington Beach. Okay, yeah, that's like, you know, California, right? Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And then they don't understand who you are, what you've yep. done. They don't understand your market. They don't understand the things that you like, the things that you don't like. Because look, quite honestly, you're going to have multiple agents that you can send business to in, in a lot of different cities. And let's say I have a client that is a diehard football fan. And I have somebody out in Miami that is a diehard football fan and somebody that tells me I hate football. Well, I, I now know, hey, it's probably best if I don't send that person to the one exactly. that hates football. Yep. I should send them to the person that does like football. Exactly. And that's why, you know, um, I just, I spoke with um, uh, a vendor last week who said there are 13,000 licensed agents in uh, the Beverly Hills, Greater Los Angeles area alone. That doesn't include the Valley, the South Bay, Orange County, San Gabriel Valley. It doesn't include any of that. And so I'm competing with 13,000 agents all the time. Guess what? We're in the business of matchmaking. We match our clients with houses, whether we represent buyers or sellers. And so uh, my objective is again, to maximize the potential for a successful referral, not from a money standpoint, although that's nice, but from a successful match standpoint so that my clients get what they need, whether they're looking to buy or sell. So if I know several people in Huntington Beach, or if one agent from Miami knows seven agents from Los Angeles, then they're going to take a look at those agents and compare them to their buyers or sellers and see who's going to be the best match. Um, Christoph Chu is a great example. He and I cover the same areas. We're two very different agents. We're both very good, but we're very different. And so you have to take that into account when you uh, consider that referral. And I don't know um, that, that all agents do that. And, and also, if I might just add, um, you might have a great agent and you give them a call to, to offer them the referral and it turns out they're on vacation or they're, they're just, they're overbooked. They can't, they can't handle that. So they say no. And then you get to move on to the next one without skipping a beat. And that's key. And one thing that you do differently, differently than most people as well is, and, and could you explain it a little bit when you talk about the follow-up with said agent in yes. a different market what what is your plan behind that like what are the things that you're trying to cover or sure. talk about or do because like i said most people it's like okay yeah you live there okay great i don't think i'll ever meet somebody in that city but okay whatever and then maybe a few months down the line like that city somehow gets brought up but they don't know anything about exactly. that agent so it's like oh dang it yeah you could so, be at a wedding or a reunion or a funeral god forbid or something somewhere where you're talking with somebody that you don't know uh, before and the topic of real estate comes up and now you've got that opportunity. Every encounter is an opportunity, whether it's um, interfacing with a, a potential client uh, or a potential referral or an agent to agent referral. So once, and let me, I'll walk you through the steps real quick. Um, I meet Jonathan at Marketing Edge and I get your card. You're going to get a follow-up 
uh, email from me um, and a handwritten note within two weeks because I get a lot of cards. It takes a minute. And that email, the, the card is a thank you note. And the email is going to be, hey, great meeting you. This is where we met. I'd love to carry the, con- I'd love to continue the conversation. Uh, I want to learn more about you and your market and your approach to real estate. That's how I learn how to match make you with clients. And thanks to Tom, uh, I created a script for that phone call. And by the way, that email includes a link to Calendly where you can have an agent to agent call. And it's a 20 to 30 minute call and it's scripted. And I basically, I'm sitting at my computer taking notes on contactually. And I want to know where you're from, how you got into real estate. Um, what hobbies do you have? Do you have kids? How long have you lived where you're at? Things like that. And then we also transition into talk to me about the boundaries. Which, which areas do you specialize in? And oh, by the way, I've got a second screen open because I'm a very visual person of a map of Huntington Beach, for example. And so you can tell me a little bit, well, you know, I go as far north, east and south as X, Y and Z, whatever it is. I can then um, screenshot those boundaries and drag and drop it right into your profile within Contactually. Now I've got a visual on where you work, how you work, what your approach is, how you live your life from a lifestyle standpoint with your beautiful son and lovely do- uh, wife. Oh, I'm and- like, I have a daughter? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh-oh. It's like, uh. <laughs> I'm like, That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, and, and you've just made me smarter about your market. So when I get... Um, when, I, when I'm at a dinner party and somebody says something about Huntington Beach, I can say, oh, yeah, I mean, oh, oh yeah, I, I know that area. What part? Da, 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 da. And I can carry on a little bit further the conversation and they'll, you know, Huntington Beach? Well, yeah, you know, a little bit. I do. I actually have a, a, a great agent that works there um, that, I, that I interact with. Hey, listen, you know, and then about real estate, carry on back and forth. And because I know a little bit more about your area of expertise, um, You've made me smarter about you and your area. And now that referral is warmer and it's more credible. And it's like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, I get it. Oh, yeah, inner circle, totally. Yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. So from that standpoint, I think it's a brilliant tactic uh, because it, again, solidifies the potential for a successful referral. And I think the, the reason why it's working for you is because you actually have a plan in place. You actually are trying to provide value but at the same time you're constantly making sure that hey i want to take care of these people when i say people i'm saying these other agents and you're taking care of them because you're actually learning about them you're learning about their markets and that gives you tools to say hey i just heard about this person oh yeah i can actually connect them with that and they, they're going to be perfect together. Mm-hmm. Let's say an agent does send a referral out and that client is working with the referring partner. What do you do or not do during that, let's say the escrow process, mm-hmm. um, once you've referred an agent out to somebody, or that, excuse me, a client to another agent? Yep, that's a great question. And I actually have two checklists. Essentially what it amounts to, and it's one is for an incoming referral and one is for an outgoing referral. And the more people that have these checklists, the more agents, then the more cohesive this referral system becomes. And then we all get a, a little more fine-tuned and it becomes a more efficient machine. Um, if you send me a referral um, I will, um, let you know, uh, the moment we've made contact, what next steps are. Um, and then a week later, seven days later, I'll give you uh, a summary recap. I will, um, if, if they're hot and heavy and ready to buy or sell, then I'll keep you posted once a week. I call it the Monday report. And if it's something where it'll take, um, time months, then you'll get an update from me once a month. And then as soon as we are in escrow, whether it's a listing launch or whether it's a buyer, um, you will then get notified upon opening escrow and then upon all contingencies removed and then the week prior to closing. And then that's when I solidify if, you know, my office needs your W-9, et cetera, et cetera. So you're not asking every week, hey, are they, did they buy a house yet? Did you send my check? Uh, where's my, where's my, where's my money at? Hey, Hey, where's, where's this, where's this, where's this? You're not doing that. Correct. You're not saying, Hey, where's my check? Because 
I get a lot of agents that reach out to me and they'll send me a random name and email, mm-hmm. which that's a different conversation. Yes, they send is. me a random, they, they send me a <laughs> random. Don't give me a, don't give me your, your, your cold call list. That yeah, is, that's they not give me a referral. A, yes. They give me their random name and email <laughs> and then they, you know, message me the next day. Like, Hey, like, did they buy a house? Like what's happening? Like ba- yeah. obviously it's not the next day, right. but basically they're like, Hey, what's going on? And right. it's like, wait, what? Dude. No, that's, <laughs> it's not, like, how that's not how this works. Right. I'm not doing prospecting for you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like you, you've never even made contact with the person. Yeah. Well, like, and when I'm asking them questions about this person, like I quickly realize, like, okay, you don't even know who this person is that you're sending to me. And then the next week it's like, Hey, d- did you guys, you know, find anything? It's like, mm-hmm. wait, mm-hmm. what is happening yeah. right now? And then unfortunately they think that Jonathan doesn't take care of my referrals correctly exactly. because I'm not getting, uh, I'm not getting a check because he's not doing his job, but it's completely opposite. It's like, Hey, look, before you even try to send referrals to other agents and actually put a plan and process behind this, you have to figure out, okay, what does this client want? Who is this person? You know, do, did I just meet them? Did I just get a phone call? And now I'm just shooting their, that client information out to everybody. Like, what is, like, take a step back. It's okay. Yeah. And and actually learn about this person. Mm-hmm. So then that way you can actually give a qualified referral out to somebody that does have a higher chance of actually closing escrow as opposed Absolutely. to the random uh, phone number and email. Right. Well, and to be fair, um, my favorite referral story is um, when I travel, I wear a particular T-shirt. Uh, on travel days. Um, is this not the travel t-shirt? This is not the travel okay. t-shirt. It says, <laughs> I like to party. And by party, I mean drink coffee and show houses. And so that right there says, hey, I sell real estate. Yeah. And so I wear that and it- Do you autom- have different colors or? I, I have two. Two yes, colors? Okay. I do. Um, so that instantly uh, gets conversation going. Um, when I'm going to the airport, I make sure that I'm, and I'm hopeful that the terminal has um, a nicer restaurant um, or a place where I can set up my computer. Um, in this particular story, it is um, the Palm restaurant. So I set up at the bar. I opened up my computer. I did not have my magic T-shirt on, but I opened it up and I pulled up the MLS and I've got houses, right? So yeah, if you sit next to me, you can't help but notice that I sell real estate. And within 10 minutes, the gentleman that sat next to me said, I couldn't help but notice, excuse me, do you sell real estate? I said, yes, I sell beautiful homes. And he, he kind of looks away and he looks back at me and he says, you wouldn't happen to sell houses in, in Los Angeles because my mom just died and I'm headed there to, uh, to you know, clean up her house and, and interview agents. You want to sell the house? And I said, I, first of all, my condolences for your loss. And second of all, I would love to tell me, you know, tell me a little bit more about it. Turns out it was in a, an area of that's not even L.A. It's Orange County, <laughs> uh, which is so funny. All of Southern California is L.A. Yeah. And it and I said, you know what, that's out of my area of expertise. But I do work with an agent, a counterpart um, that I am more than happy to connect you with. Um, you mentioned you're going there for the weekend. Does Saturday at 10 a.m. work for you? absolutely send her on over and it was um am i can i give the name of, of the course agent? okay great it was carrie craig she was amazing and she took excellent care of them she went over there on saturday morning and listed the house and sold the house and um it it was perfect this was a guy that i met at an airport bar so it was a solid qualified lead but i didn't know them know them right but i knew enough to know all right name, address, phone number, the, the backstory, and everything I needed to be able to present a qualified lead. And Carrie and I stayed in constant communication. She let me know when the listing paperwork was signed, when it was going to launch, when there was an open house in case I wanted to swing by, um, since it's within the area. And then when it went into escrow and when we were closing. And it's that simple. And if you have that checklist, then you can't go wrong. And this is an easy, 
for agents, it should be a no brainer because everything that we do as agents um, is all about the people. It's the human effect. You can be as technology driven and technology forward as you want to be. You can be on the cutting edge. Jonathan Hawkins, you're right there. <laughs> but you also have that human component. You make it real. You're genuine. You're authentic. And you have to have that. It doesn't matter if you're uh, a fellow agent or a client or simply the guy at the grocery store. You're real. And, and again, that applies to any industry, yep. no matter what. Yep. Let's flip the script a little bit. We're, we're talking about a lot of things that agents should or could be doing when it comes to agent to agent referrals. Mm -hmm. What's one thing an agent should not do when it comes to <laughs> agent to agent referrals? I have one pet peeve that is so big. It's it, it this transcends agent to agent, and this is just you're a professional. If you answer the phone and you say hello. You lost me. You have lost me. This is a business. I don't call Target. You don't hear, when I dial Target, you don't hear them say, hello, <laughs> hello. And it, dude, hi, this is Melissa. How can, or good afternoon. This is Melissa. How can I help? It's especially, especially, this is, especially if you've got a unique name that you have no idea how, how to pronounce. Oh, people say my name wrong all the time. Great, then when you answer the phone, you should be very clear on how to pronounce it. Because let me tell you something, Charmaine is spelled 17 million different ways and it never comes out as Charmaine. So you should say, hello, this is Charmaine. Oh, great, hey Charmaine, this is Melissa Menard. Da, 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 da. Just, if, if you're going to be a professional and you're going to sell homes, when your phone rings, answer the phone professionally. First, and make sure you answer the phone as well. Oh, yes, answer the phone. <laughs> answer for the sure. phone. But when you answer it, make sure that you're answering professionally. What about, um, let's say they answer the phone professionally. Yep. Um, you get through a conversation and the conversation finishes, what, what, however the conversation goes. What should that person not do um, when it comes to agent, to agent referrals? Because I think initially what happens is you talk to somebody, hey, I'm learning about your market. I'm learning about the things that you like, do, and whatnot. And then initially, um, I guess what I'm trying to get at is a lot of agents just don't continue the conversation. They don't continue to try and reach out because they think, oh, that person never sent me a referral. And they don't talk to these people anymore. They, they kind of have like this animosity of like, why did this person take up my time and then never send me anything? Yeah. Like, so I don't understand it because... Um, a lot of agents just assume like, oh yeah, if we're going to talk about agent to agent referrals, like, do you have a client for me? Yeah, like you right must now? have something right yeah, now. Yeah, you have something. Can you give me a client? Like yeah. blah, blah, blah. And if you don't, then like instantly it's like, they don't talk to you anymore. Mm -hmm. You try to engage. Like they might even say like, oh yeah, they're, they're a waste of time or whatever. Yeah. What would you not do? So, so I ask you that question. Then I ask you, do you do that with buyers and sellers? Exactly. <laughs> you didn't buy a house for me today. Eh, you're a waste of time. No, thanks. Next. And, no. and so where are you putting, where are you putting these agents at? You're putting them into a CRM and you have yeah. a, a, a plan for the people that haven't sent you a referral or never. No, been. no. It, 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 I'm again, just saying it's, agents. Right. It's not about the money. Exactly. Right. So it is about being able to build my agent to agent arsenal. Um, so that when I go to a dinner party, family reunion, whatever it is, locally or out of town, vacation, doesn't matter. I, I can carry that arsenal with me. It's in my head, and it's also in my CRM. I use Contactually. I've used it for seven years. I think it's brilliant. It's as powerful and robust as you want it to be, and I think that that's um, so important because you can manipulate it to serve your purposes. Um, something that I do on that call, and again, it's scripted, is at the end, I'll say, hey, listen, it was really great getting to know you. Here's what you can expect moving forward. Um, I've tagged you so that I've set up a task to remind me to call you if we haven't spoken about referrals in the next six months. I'm just going to call, take five minutes and say, hey, how are you? How, how's your market? Everything cool? You know, it's Melissa in LA. Let me know how I can be of service to you and your clients. And I'll do the same for you there. And then I will reference one personal note that I took six months previously. So you're going to hear from me every six months. And that I think is important. I'm not calling to shoot the shit. 
That is not my objective. It's not like I don't have better things to do. My conversation with you, every time I talk with you, that's intel. You can appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Right? And so I'm building that arsenal of, of agent-to-agent agent power every time I'm talking with every single agent, and I take copious notes. That's key. Take notes so that people remember. And, and save the notes and put them in a place to where it's easy to access them. Yeah, it's the like, CRM. Again, it's all of these base, and it's kind of funny, but on every episode, it kind of goes from like, crazy ideas and then we start talking with phenomenal agents and at the end at the core of everything it's really basic but it's strategic <laughs> it's yep. thought out it's deliberate it's, it's deliberate yes. and it's done in a way that works for that person it you know you can hear me say hey this is what i do and we've got all this fancy stuff if you're like i don't know anything about that i don't care about that mm -hmm. i do what i do and i do it good like that's okay and for anybody listening if you're saying hey you know Agent to agent referrals is not my thing. Okay, that's fine. But at least you know if it does pop up, like these are the things that I should do. Right. This is how it works. I, I'm not asking or telling anybody in, in this episode that, hey, you need to go out now and go talk to every single agent, you know, and instantly add agent to agent referrals into your back pocket um, of, of things that you're doing every single day. No, that would, if you've never done anything like this, if you don't have a plan, like it's not going to work. What I'm trying to get people to understand is there's tons of different things out there and maybe you've never even considered agent to agent referrals mm -hmm. before. And if you haven't, you should probably do so because like you said, it's, it's, an it's super simple. If you've got business cards and you've got a good handshake and you can make eye contact, you've got, you've got game. Do you have a different business card that you would give an agent as opposed to a client? Well, as a matter of fact, Jonathan, I do. I have an agent-to-agent -agent brochure. Um, it's great that I have a business card for my clients, but I have uh, this brochure. Um, basically, all of the different ways you can contact me and connect with me on social media. Uh, a little blurb uh, about the promise that I give to you and your clients that I personally hand sign. Um, the difference. Um, you can talk with, like I said, there are 13,000 agents in my town. So that's who I'm competing against. Here's what makes me different from them, and here's why. And then, um, because not everybody knows everything about L.A., there's a handy little map that shows the Pacific Ocean and where I do business. And then on the backside are uh, reviews from agents that I've worked with in the past that have been very pleased with uh, my, my service. Perfect. I love it. We're going to leave this with one last piece of advice that you would give an agent in the realm of agent to agent. And we say agent, agent, agent a lot on this episode. Yeah, agent to agent. <laughs> agent to agent referrals. One last piece of advice. That's so tough. I've, I've already given, um, I'm trying to think. You of, can or reiterate, reiterate one thing that you've already said. Like um, just get this one thing out of this episode. If somebody were to go yes. to the last 25 seconds and they hear this yes. couple sentences, what would it be? Every encounter is an opportunity. Don't squander it. You have an opportunity for referral business with every single conversation you have. Trust me, it's there. Love it. Where can people find you, connect with you, engage with you on social media? Sure. Uh, MelissaMenardHolmes.com. At Home with Melissa on Twitter. And we're going to post all the links as oh, well. So. Okay, good. I, I, it's, it's just all <laughs> Melissa Menard, <laughs> Melissa Menard, Menard Holmes. Minnesota. Yeah, it's it's all there. Sweet. Well, on every episode, we always end with music. And so <gasps> I like to kind of rock out and we just go from there. So Cool. Rock out. <laughs>Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.